pleasure to speak with you. I've watched the first few episodes. I can't wait to see the rest of it and see how it all unfolds. But for you, I, it does feel like a more reserved kind of role for you, especially for something in the horror genre. Was it kind of nice for you to show another side, to maybe tap into something that, that does seem, I don't want to say more serious, but definitely less, I guess, slapstick? Yeah. I mean, he's an adult. I'm an adult now. Uh, <laughs> my and My sensibilities change just like anybody else's. So um, I read the guy as a perfectly rational character who's trying to figure yes. out if this is all real or not real. <laughs> and I relate to it because I don't believe in any of this crap. And so <laughs> I'm, I like the chief is like, okay, let's figure out if there's a logical explanation. Cause a lot of conspiracy theories uh, came out of this, yeah. uh, came <laughs> out of the satanic panic. And a lot of them are still floating in the, in the ether, but it, I think it was just a, it's a reaction to the Reagan era. It was very, you know, he was he wanted to put a thumb on it. Um, you know, those radical hippies, 60s and 70s. Let's have no more of that. <laughs> and, and so I, I think it's uh, it was a very interesting time period. And you're always going to have the subversive whenever there is a, a force that's very controlling. You know, drugs are bad. Mm -hmm. As someone who was, you know, in their 20s in the 80s, was Satanic Panic ever something that, like, you know, got into, crept into your actual life or, or town or wherever you were at the time? I'm not sure that <laughs> we had that phrase back then. I was mm -hmm. more uh, of a practicing religious guy at that time. So uh, I was I was certainly concerned about anything that might <laughs> challenge all the stuff that you read when you're a kid, you go to go to Sunday school, you learn that this happens and this happens and this happens. <laughs> and then you hear that there's a group that goes, mm, no, we like this over here. And we think this is just as real as this over here. Mm -hmm. and we like this better. And it's just upsetting. It's upsetting to anybody who really believes in something with all of their heart, that mm. it's tricky when something else comes in and attacks it. So in a right. small town, this is the right town to do this with. Uh, Happy Hollow, Michigan in the 80s. You don't do this to <laughs> New York City. Right. <laughs> New York City, so what? So what? <laughs> it's just another crazy day in New York City. But small town in the 80s. I'm from Michigan. Um, you know, I, I know these small towns. I've, my folks had a place outside of Gladwood, Michigan, you know, right in the middle of the state. Okay. And this... <laughs> Nothing happens in those towns. There's no yeah. criminal activity whatsoever. Shotgun mm -hmm. accidents, you know, hunting accidents. That, that's it. So <laughs> it's the right premise. And I thought the writers, uh, Matthew Kane and his group, did a very good job. And now I know I saw a recent interview where you said you, you, you're kind of hesitant to read roles that are horror these days. I think obviously because you have such a, you know, history with doing horror yourself. What are you hoping to do more of, and, and maybe what what is you know behind maybe that that not aversion but hesitance, I, I guess. Well, I don't look. I don't. <laughs> it's just a matter of how many how many days you want to wake up uh, staring at a cellar floor covered in blood. <laughs> the answer is not many more for me. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's not like I'm avoiding horror. I avoid anything that's crappy uh, these days. <laughs> I've done so much crappy stuff. I know what's crappy. <laughs> and I know what's going to lead to crappiness because I can smell it a mile away. And this is universal. These are my, these are my burn notice buddies. This is my studio, mm -hmm. uh, Hercules and Xena, you know, universal. I, I still have fond memories of those times. So <laughs> all of that adds up to me being interested. And if the words aren't on the page, I now know, don't go after it. You know, I've, I've mm -hmm. turned things down because I say to my agent, I don't know what they want me to do here. It seems yeah. like anybody could say any of these lines of dialogue on this page, whereas each character should be distinct. <laughs> like you shouldn't be able to swap a single line of dialogue with any other right. characters, right? <laughs> and writers do this every day. They go, ah, take half of this and give it to Joe and let <laughs> have Joe say Karen's lines. And so that's sloppy writing. And so I'm attracted <laughs> by good writing. Yeah. As you should be. <laughs> and now I have to ask, because I am a huge Evil Dead fan. I saw you were with the director of the next one recently. You yeah. shared the picture on Instagram. Yeah. What yeah. should we read into that photo? <laughs> uh, whatever you want. Uh, there's more There's more coming. 
because uh, the last Evil Dead from Lee Cronin, you know, made the most of any Evil Dead movie of all of them. Yeah. And and so um, we'd be silly not to let the folks have what they want. More carnage and, and you'll, mayhem. You'll continue to be involved in yeah, some we'll way, happily, either behind we'll or in front out. of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll beat those directors up. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> Can't wait. And lastly, do you have any Halloween plans this year? Do you, do you know what your costume is? Yes, normally do you, do you I, dress go, up? I, yeah, I, I go as an unemployed <laughs> actor normally. <laughs> Great. No, in this case, my local Elks, the Ashland Elks, Ashland Elks 944, we're having a casino ween on the 26th. We're having a big, huge all Elks bash at my, at my Elks. It's going to be really cool. Well, have fun. Happy spooky season and a pleasure speaking Thanks. with you. Can you can come. You just got to say you're a guest to me and you can get in. I'm on my way. Okay. <laughs> have a good one. Thank you.